the Monday, July 9th meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Please join us for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note this meeting is being made available on Public Access Channel 15 and all co co comments uh, will be made available. Uh, Bill has the announcement. Uh, greetings everybody and, uh, to the public out there. The uh, Pembroke Police Boys Club is having its yearly fundraiser um, this Saturday, July 14th from uh, 1030 until finish. And it will be adult and youth competitions for um, they call cornhole tournament or bago. I guess it's a couple different names for it. Um, but anyway, we're going to have adult and youth uh, competition, prizes, and raffles. Um, there'll also be a DJ present, and um, there'll be uh, free pontoon boat rides on Furnace Pond. If anybody has never been on Furnace Pond before, um, it's supposed to be a really nice day, and uh, I'd like to have the people come and support the Boys and Girls Club uh, up in the center our only uh, fundraiser that we do uh, once a year so um, show up and just have a good time it's be good weather thank you all right hopefully it will be good weather first up on our agenda we have an appointment with the planning board chairman for a joint vote to appoint john shoal of 30 mira mesa drive to vacancy on planning board through the 2019 town election which on may 18 2019 So I'm Andy Wendell, I'm the um, Vice Chair of the Planning Board. Um, we're fortunate enough to have two people step forward who were interested in the position. We interviewed both of them, Mark Rubin and John Scholl. And uh, both of them brought some great credentials with them and some very good qualifications with them. And after a lengthy discussion, after we interviewed both of them, we made a unanimous decision to recommend John Scholl. So we make that recommendation. And I'm sure the planning board uh, vetted both candidates well, and the planning board knows its business uh, better than anyone in town. So, if, Thank you. if you're ready, if you're ready for a motion, um, Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint John Scholl of 30 Mesa Mara Mesa Drive to the vacancy on the planning board through 2019 town election. May 18th, 2019, coming up. Second. All righty, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Okay, none. Passes unanimously. Great. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you very much. much. And welcome, John Scholl. All righty, first up on the board action items is a vote to accept 31 Oak Terrace parcel ID B5-67 as tax possession property 11TL141749. Mr. Chairman, move to accept assessor's parcel B5-67 at 31 Oak Terrace as tax possession property at the recommendation of the town treasurer. Second. All right, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, passes unanimously. Next up, we we'll consider a request to appoint Michelle O'Connor of 12 McDonald's Way to Commission on Disabilities. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the appointment of Michelle O'Connor of 12 McDonald Way to the Commission on Disabilities. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, pass unanimously. Welcome, Michelle. Ed, is there a reason the next one has an asterisk? Only that it was part of the amended agenda, and so Springer likes to make that known that uh, 
in addition, well, in addition to the agenda that she originally posted on Thursday, that this was added to the uh, agenda, and she just wanted the board to know that this was the item that caused the uh, agenda to be amended. All righty, thank you for that description. Uh, Bill, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure of meeting Mr. Moser. Um, he came to our uh, um, last meeting. I actually met him on the North River um, when I was down there uh, doing a tour, and, and um, he uh, showed his interest. And in, uh, he showed up at the last meeting that we had, um, and the, uh, the membership, um, you know, took uh, very well to to him being a local teacher, and. Um, and also his interest in in um, in becoming a heron fisheries commissioner and helping with the juvenile the junior fisheries commissioners which um, has, has been kind of a stalemate for uh, the last couple of years so uh, we're kind of looking forward to that uh, mr. Mosier is here tonight and uh, if you would like to come up and uh, advise the board on uh, what, he, what he would like to do the other thing I'd like to tell you is that the uh, that the board voted unanimously uh, to appoint him as an alternate member uh, at our last meeting. So, Well, good evening, gentlemen. Um, I was wondering what the asterisk meant as well when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it means I'm woefully, I feel underdressed for tonight. Probably because um, you're so tall. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know. um, yeah, I became a member of the North and South River Watershed Association. I've uh, always been interested in the herring and I've been following Sarah Brady around with a herring count and I grew up fishing on the North River and like Mr. Bolter said I ran into him on the North River and started asking some questions and he said there was a meeting on that next Tuesday and I was happy to attend and when I saw there was only two um, two children or teenagers there and they were talking about a future plan I thought being an elementary school teacher at North Pembroke fit right in as a uh, liaison, if you will, to try to get more young children involved and interested in uh, the herring fisheries. So I've already had a preliminary meeting with the superintendent as far as that goes, and I'm um, really looking forward to putting hip waders on and clearing streams for the fish, and if I can get some children to maybe come join in and litter clean up or in any way that I can, um, I'd love to do that. I'd love to answer any questions that you have for me as well. Great What's to have you. <laughs> what size boot do you have? <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Brendan is a neighbor on Little Sandy, and he is a get it done kind of guy. So he would be a great addition to the herring fisheries group. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, Mr. Moser, knowing you for the past several years, teaching my son at North. You know, glad to have you. Great. Thank you. Okay. And as if there's no more questions. Your motion. I'll get a motion. Uh, move to appoint uh, Brendan Moja as an alternate vacancy in the Heron Fisheries Commission, and the term will expire on 2020. Second. All righty. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote as well. Any opposed? Any none? I vote it unanimously. Welcome aboard. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. Thanks. Well. Thank you. Next up, we have a vote to approve a request for use of the town green on August 11th and 12th for the annual Pembroke Arts Festival. Mr. Chairman, move to grant permission for the use of the town green and the community center building on Saturday, August 11th from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. and Sunday, August 12th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. to the Pembroke Arts Festival Committee subject to the approval of the police chief. Second. Okay. All right, with a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, pass the unanimous. <clears throat> Next up, we have a vote to approve a request for use of the Old Ham Pond on September 29, 2018 by Massachusetts Kayak Bass and Fish Tournament. Hearing no uh, no questions, uh, I would make a motion to grant a special use summer event permit to Ken Wood of Massachusetts Kayak 
Bass and Fishing Club to hold a fishing tournament on Oldham Pond on September 29, 2018, condition, conditionally upon the terms of the approval of the Conservation Commission. And I guess they have a list of um, different things that they want these people these, on these tournaments to do, which would be certain hooks that they use and catch and release and stuff like that. So that um, would make that motion. Second. Second. Some people in the audience have asked us to speak up, so I'll try to do so. Uh, there's been a motion and a second in regards to the vote to approve the request for use of Oldham Pond on September 19th for a fishing tournament. All those in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, it passes unanimously. Uh, that is the last of the board action items. However, since there are a few individuals in the audience tonight, I'd like to take the Ask the Selectman portion of the meeting out of order. Does anybody have anything for the selectmen tonight? Please come up to the microphone. Yeah. I'm uh, Paul Lewis. My wife is Carol Lewis. I'm the board last year authorized the bench to be put on the green and then neglected to put them out this year. I know it has nothing to do with you guys, but I wish you'd make a phone call to the recreation chairman get the benches put back out for the green. Uh, this is the second concert I was down here last night. The building was locked up. It was supposed to keep the building open while the concerts are going on. <coughs> then they're neglecting that too. Somebody has to get on, the, on their case. I don't know what one of you guys are in charge of recreation and appointments, but at least a good blood over there, I think. <laughs> And that's how I come down to see if I can talk to one of you guys about it. We're getting benches over there on that green? They're in the community center inside locked up. And they belong out on the green <laughs> for the summer. And uh, there's two of them, the memorial benches. The third one is a permanent in the cement. There's one memorial. There's the two that are uh, portable will go back inside for the winter. And they use them for it. Winter, during the concert season up until September, that it should be out on the green. Plus, the green is still a mess. I guess you guys know about that. They haven't done any maintenance on the green for a couple of years now. Well, that's all I have to say. Well, thank you for coming in. You can certainly reach out about the benches. Thank you. Well, let's hope we can get something more. Thanks for letting us know. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. Anybody else have anything for this Slackman? Lou? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for recognizing me. I, I would like to speak to <coughs> the board, but my understanding is that uh, Mr. Fawn is going to be addressing that subject, and I uh, thought I would wait to hear what he uh, has to say. All righty. Thank you. Hearing nobody else, we'll go ahead and move on to old business. First of which being a record of approved bills and payrolls from July 2nd, 2018. Mr. Chairman, um, on July 2nd, uh, 2018, uh, I am pleased to report um, that on that date, I personally viewed four accounts payable warrants totaling $385,859.02 and one payroll warrant totaling $257,707.73 uh, prepared by the town accountant and authorized the exempted expenditures for payment. Move to accept the report. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, we accept the report unanimously. Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, was this is the opportune time for me to um, bring to the board's attention that uh, two weeks ago the board tabled the, any action on any uh, abatement for trash, and I wanted to bring it up under old business, and uh, obviously. 
we're at this point, so I believe uh, Mr. Stone might want to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Uh, as you may remember, I was before the board a couple of weeks ago when the subject of trash abatements uh, were brought up and the discussion was held. And uh, it seemed to me at the time that the uh, board may be leaning toward making an adjustment on the uh, fee. And uh, I was here uh, kind of uh, representing approximately 150 seniors who do file and get approval of a trash abatement, which lowers their fee to 140. And uh, I've uh, had many conversations with some of those folks, and I told them that uh, that I believed in their cause, and I would like the board to reconsider uh, the discussion and the thoughts that took place a couple of weeks ago. I'm here to ask you to leave the abatement process the way it has been for many years, which in effect uh, reduces whatever the budget requirement to service the public is for trash. Currently it's $280 a year for uh, each of the somewhat 6,000 homes in Pembo. Uh, we have a process that addresses uh, the seniors uh, over a certain age and under a certain income. And a form is uh, required annually to be filled out by anyone who wants to apply for that abatement. And it gets uh, reviewed and approved or not approved by the town administrator. So, uh, as I mentioned last time I was here, the budget for next year, debated and approved at town meeting, uh, did not cause a raise in the trash fee to be higher than 280. It's still 280 for next year as it was for the year that we're in. So, uh, I don't understand the reasoning to ask people who qualify for the abatement to uh, actually have to pay more for their trash removal service. Uh, as you all know, they would get a $140 bill instead of $280. Well, um, I just don't see why that is required at this time. Uh, leaving it at 280 pays for the cost of trash for next year as voted on. So um, I would like the board, uh, respectfully request the board to rethink that issue and leave the abatement program the way that it is and the way it has been for many years. And uh, if you do, then the fee for next year, if you qualify for an abatement, would remain $140. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, I'd probably like to apologize that I, you know, I wasn't here um, when you guys made made the original um, the vote to do that. But since then, I went online and I uh, I downloaded uh, 39 pages of documents. Um, about trash, trash abatements, and uh, all that has to do with that. And I would really like to say that the that the uh, board um, that runs it now, up out of the collector's office, um, has done a really good job. It's they they have done a a super job up there. And um, uh, still, after seeing everything that was there, um, I had quite a conversation. Um, with uh, Kathleen McCarthy, who, who runs the office up there, and um, spent some time on the phone with her, trying to understand why um, they wanted to change just the seniors. Um, because if they were going to change something, they, in my opinion, they should change it all for everybody. Um, not just, not just, um, not say pick on the seniors, but um, she explained to me that um, 
the trash bill is kind of separated in half. So everybody um, has to pay half of, of the, at least half of the trash bill. So the abatement process is, was trying to be changed so that, that the seniors got a percentage um, of the other half. So that's where the, um, I think that it, it seems a little bit mixed up to me because it's down to um, uh, 140 and 140. So everybody has to pay the 140. And then they <coughs> did the abatement for the 140 for the seniors, which didn't, which really didn't make sense because um, to take half of off of the 140 didn't make much sense to me. Where the whole trash bill is, it's not really a tax. If it could have been a tax, then um, it, you know it could have been a different story. But um, it isn't. The bill comes out as 280 for your trash bill, in the way that it always has been is that if they pass. Um, the standards that were put in place, then they would get abated down to the 140, which would be half. If they raise the, the uh, trash fee next year and it goes up to uh, 290 or $300, they're still going to have to pay half of whatever the trash bill is. So um, I would like to see it stay at least the way it is now, what Mr. Stone said. Uh, keep it the way it is now for another year because it's not any more cost to the town. Um, and, you know, don't put it on the seniors. And, uh, and between now and next year, um, maybe we can look into a lot of things. There's, there's probably the trash bill may go up because of recycling and all that other stuff. So I would think that that would be the time that we do that is... Um, if they don't want to do a 50%, if the board doesn't want to do a 50% reduction in the trash bill for the people that qualify, then I would think that that would be the time when they change everything for everybody that that gets put into place. So I, I would be inclined to voting to keep it the way that it was, the same as Mr. Stone had asked uh, to do in the future. Uh, we've had this board asked Ed Thorne to meet with the, the treasurer collector and the town accountant to discuss this further. Uh, Ed, could you explain to us uh, uh, your discussions and your conclusions? Well, I think one of the things that um, was proposed was the original um, abatement for seniors to 210, and the board reduced that to 200. Um, the, uh, the answer to the savings uh, to the town, how much um, would we receive in addition uh, if we remained at $200 for seniors instead of 140 was approximately $9,000. Um, that would be how much money would be raised if we charge $200 for those 150 people as opposed to the 140. Uh, basically, the 140 is um, what it, the cost of operating the recycling center, uh, paying for the capping of the landfill, uh, and all the costs associated with the landfill itself. And basically, that's the tax. Um, I think that you know, the argument was made that seniors still produce trash. Um, but basically, um, you know, it would be what the abatement would be. Um, as we mentioned, there's 150 people that uh, qualify from an income and age standpoint every year. Uh, that number's kind of remain uh, constant, and uh, those are the things that we were looking at. Um, one of the things that we are facing right now, and as Bill mentioned, <coughs> that. Um, Getting, disposing of recyclables now is is costing more uh, than ever, um, and it has to do with the situation where China is not accepting as much um, uh, in recyclables as they did in years past, and that's driving the cost going up. Um, a year ago, at this time, the town was getting paid to get rid of recycling uh, recyclables, 
uh, to waste management in Avon. Uh, that price has gone from plus a dollar or ten dollars to now sixty dollars a ton, um, and it'll go up to uh, seventy-three dollars a ton for the month of July, as we uh, had an amendment to the contract with Avon that it, that is good for two more years, um, and it's still pretty competitive that we will be paying seventy-three dollars a ton to get rid of recyclables. So that drives up that <coughs> one particular line item. Um, as Lou mentioned, the, the budget was set by town meeting. It's approximately one point uh, seven million dollars uh, to operate the recycling center, to pay for a curbside trash and recycling pickup, to dispose of the trash at the Taunton landfill, New Bedford waste, and to take care of the, the po disposal of uh, recyclables. And so, um, basically, the bottom line is the difference between. Uh, $200 and $140 per senior citizen is uh, $9,000. Total. And that's one of several abatements that we offer. Thank you for that description of the abatement. Mr. Chairman, it was voted in by town meeting that uh, that be a part of the budget. I think we took something several weeks ago and fixed it when it wasn't broken. And we can look at next year and next year as we look at the whole picture of what it costs to get rid of recyclables and regular trash. But uh, as Mr. Stone put, um, it was in the budget. It, it's already been figured in. Um, I'd say let's stand with the seniors and give them a discount. All right. We'll go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just make a quick comment on what uh, Ed said. Uh, we all certainly know uh, the situation we're in with recyclables. Uh, it's a big difference to be uh, getting paid for recyclables and now paying to get rid of the same product. That's another problem. <coughs> and uh, I think Ed even mentioned that last week uh, talking about looking at a list of recyclables Maybe there are some recyclables that we can still get money for and others that we're not going to get money for. So we may uh, want to look at that. I would uh, urge Ed to do that. If I can be of any help to you, I will volunteer to do that, seeing I was involved with curbside recycling and negotiating contracts for trash haulers and all of that. Um, I think that the time to address an issue is when you have a problem. We don't have a problem for next year as far as our budget. I understand we don't know about the recyclables yet, but um, I don't think we should look at the 150 seniors who can least afford the trash fee to bear the brunt of a change in recyclables. Uh, costing the town money to get rid of them. I think that should go into the trash fee in general for all of us, for 6,000 families, not 150 people. So I think if the trash fee has to go up for whatever reason, even though we may have taken uh, action to keep the cost down, I think that should be borne by all of us. We have a great system in this town for picking up and getting rid of trash and recyclables. Uh, I don't know the facts, but I would imagine we have to be one of the best deals on the South Shore for the people of Pembroke. We have a great system. And I think when there's a problem, all of us should be required to address the problem, not a small number of people. Thank you. And especially the ones that can least afford it. So, I mean, if they pass all the guidelines to, that they need to pass because of their age and how much they bring in to the household, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I would vote to go up on my trash fee before I would this. So. Do you know? Just so the folks at home understand what we're talking about here and in the audience. A few weeks ago, we 
voted to raise the trash bill to senior citizens to $200, up from 140 last year, and now are reconsidering that vote. Uh, Bill, you had said you had, would support moving yes. back down. Was that in the form of a motion? I, I would make a motion that, um, that the Mr. Chairman, it's a point of order. It would be um, uh, against the rules of Robert's rules for Bill or I to make a, um, a motion for reconsideration. Excuse me? not on the prevailing we, side. We, re we voted to reconsider it uh, last meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's already it's already been oh, reconsidered. Oh, so that's right. That's fine. Yeah. And, and uh, as an aside, yeah. the board of selectmen in Pembroke has never adopted Robert's rules of order. We just use them as a as a, as a guideline. Inf informal guideline. Yeah. yeah Dan well, reconsidered it, and Vince, you were able to vote on it the last time we did right. a couple weeks ago. So. Right. See what a holiday does in the Yeah. <laughs> so it's open. It, it's it's open for debate and motion now. Yeah. So I, I would make a motion to leave the uh, trash fee for the seniors as is for now and that um, uh, that we uh, uh, possibly take uh, Lou Stone's advice and um, maybe start a committee for um, for uh, the future to, to look into um, what we should be doing for the future but to leave the seniors at uh, 140 right now. Second. All right, a motion and a second to reconsider the trash bill. All those in favor? Right. I vote aye as well. Any opposed? No. No. So the motion passes three to two. Thank you for coming in. It's easy to vote no when you already got three, but I, I, can I go on? Yeah. So the w one thing that I didn't bring into this d into the debate, or the discussion rather, is uh, having discussed with uh, the town treasurer collector, uh, the reason the recommendation came before us in the first place is that the the, the rebate for seniors has been ex exorbitant. It's been half. So if half of the total cost went, went to capping of the landfill and the financial aspects, the other half goes to the actual hauling. So the seniors have, will, will qualify, have never paid to have trash hauled. They're getting it for free. So the, the, the rebate has been too much for years and years, so they were trying to amend it. And what happened was they came and blindsided everybody without debate. And I think that was the, the real mistake of this board. We should have had a, an open debate before it came before us and we had a vote that night. Uh, so we'll take that as a lesson learned for the future. And um, and it's, it's passed, get back to where they were, $140. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that portion of it, of the discussion. Yeah, that's correct. It, it is correct, and it, and I understand that, and um, but I still I still cannot swallow the whole thing that that we have the seniors do it, um, and not anybody else. So um, I mean, when when it comes down to uh, setting standards for the future, then we can sit down and talk about that. Um, but this has already been decided upon, and it's already um, funded by the town. So. Um, well, as I said, Bill, it, it, it's easy to vote no when there's already three yeses in front of you, but if, if the way the debate has gone, if they needed a swing vote, uh, I, I, I would have said yes to, to have it happen this year. Uh, but I wanted to say no because that's, that's my conviction uh, for this discussion. Right, and, and to say that okay, not all families are hurting in this town, not just seniors, you know, I just, that's the reason why I voted no because everyone's hurting in this town. We're going to be in such a deficit next year and including in 2020. So it's going to happen anyway. So my reason voting no for this was because we put a little bit more into it. Yes, it's $9,000 more, but we're trying to find nickels and dimes to make sure we can pay for police, fire, DPW, and everyone else to make sure we have a fair share for all citizens. So that's the reason why I voted no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one last comment. I want to thank the board for their vote. Um, I understand Dan's comments completely and John's, and I think you're both right. Um, I think uh, we, we do have financial issues staring us in the face, 
Um, and I also agree with Dan that uh, taking an action like this, changing an abatement uh, pretty dramatically, uh, requires discussion and information to the public, maybe in the form of a public meeting if that should come to pass. So uh, I appreciate your vote tonight and uh, uh, the uh, 150 seniors also appreciate your vote. Thank you. All right, thanks, thanks Dave, for coming in. Well, Mr. Chairman, just one last comment on that. I think Dan was right in saying that, um, you know, we could have handled it better in terms of not a surprise to us or, you know, secondarily a surprise to the general public. And I think that was a, um, you know, a problem with the vote itself, was we weren't um, as prepared as we could have been. That is true. Something to consider for next year, for next time we discuss this. So go ahead and move on to the town administrator's report. Well, my report um, was preempted by the discussion of the uh, uh, trash abatement because I mentioned uh, the latest that we have from uh, Waste Management in Avon about the new contract, um, or the contract amendment. Our contract with Waste Management expires in 2020. Um, and the way it operates is that we have what is known as a processing fee in the contract. And for three years, the processing fee was $78 a ton. If the blended value of all of the commodities that we pick up at the curb were less than $78 a ton, then we would pay the difference. If those commodities were worth more than the processing fee, then we would get a rebate back. We would get money back. And so what's happened, as I mentioned earlier, that because China, who's the largest importer of uh, recyclables in the world, started being picky about the types of recyclables that they were having, and they were claiming that it was contaminated, that they drove up the price. And so the recyclable, recycling companies in the United States then raised the price of their processing fee. And we were notified on Friday that processing fee for FY19 would be $90 a ton. So basically, the $60 a ton that we paid last month to get rid of recyclables would be now worth $63 a ton. So that's basically, you know, what we're facing. Um, you know, we, you know, uh, the town accountant and I have made provisions to include the increase in the particular line item. Uh, we were hoping to only have to pay thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars to dispose of recycling. Uh, that's going to be close to six figures, you know, for FY19. Um, we're now we're now paying more to dispose of recyclables than we are for trash. But then again, that's that's the nature of the market, and a lot of communities right now are are, fa are faced with uh, having to get rid of recyclables at a much higher rate than what we're paying uh, because they don't have contracts with a company like uh, Waste Management that we uh, uh, formulated in 2015. So, um, Mr. Chairman, that's our report. Sounds like we signed a great deal in 2015. Thank you for that report. I'll come back to ask the selectmen since there's still some people here. Does you guys don't have anything for the selectmen tonight? Did you come in and tell us anything? Any questions? No? That's all right. Thank you for coming in. Moving on to new business. Cool. Oh, please come up to the microphone. Awesome. Hello. Uh, my Hi. name is Cody. I live at 286 Pleasant Street. Um, question about how Pembroke gets our energy. So Boston right now is considering Community Choice Energy, which is a municipal aggregation plan that would allow the city to like purchase energy in bulk and use that leverage to request a higher percentage of renewables in the state minimum. Um, and I know that Pembroke, last year or two years ago, entered a municipal aggregation agreement. Um, but to my knowledge, we haven't used that yet to request a higher percentage of renewables than the state minimum, which I think right now is 12%. So I was just wondering, was that conversation ever on the table at all? Has Pembroke considered doing that? Um, or are we kind of just sticking with the state minimum right now? Yeah, Dan, please go ahead. 
Yes, so we adopted the municipal aggregation plan and we have just recently signed on, if Ed can explain, uh, <coughs> we, we have a menu of energy choices to make and suppliers and uh, we made a choice and maybe Ed can explain it a little well, bit. Um, we actually had a proposal on the table, and if the board remembers, it looked like it was going to be very favorable for the residents of town if we signed that agreement. But then the price then did not become as attractive. And so we are waiting for um, uh, Colonial Power, who's the broker uh, that was uh, selected by the Old Colony Planning Council, uh, to come back with another price uh, when National Grid comes back with their their six month price increase. As you know, they lower prices for the the summer and raise them for the winter. And they do that every six months. And so now we're waiting on what the latest is going to be from Colonial Power. And if the rate is favorable, then you'll be looking at a chart that shows whether or not we get that rate for six months in a row or for 12 months or up to three years if, if we so uh, think it's uh, advantageous for the town. But right now, the uh, the price that was offered uh, wasn't um, as, as attractive as we thought it could be. So we're just waiting on Colonial Power to come back with some new prices and then, you know, I'll approach the board about um, what it would do. I know that in, in Plymouth, um, basically, I think since Plymouth went to it uh, six months ago, I think I've saved almost $400 in total electric costs. Um, so we'll see, you know, and, and, and I can speak from personal experience that it, it works because uh, you don't have the fluctuation in uh, supply energy costs you know, every six months and so it'll be the flat flat fee for whatever period of time so um, the, the system works um, renewable energy uh, whether it's hydro or um, wind power is usually a little bit more expected uh, expensive than your standard um, fossil fuel um, situation but it's always on the chart and so that's something that you know, will be presented to the board the next time Colonial Power comes back with a, with a proposal that's advocated for the town. Okay, next question. Oops, I'm not curious now. Um, thank you. Thank you for your question. And, and while we're talking about power, um, we are starting to re receive dividends from our solar farm on the Habermock landfill. Uh, we are working uh, right now with the town accountant's office and Nick Sakello, the chairman of the Energy Committee, uh, to make heads or tails of the net metering credits that we got for the 29 accounts that we have established. That it looks as if we're, we could be saving maybe 40% of our total electric costs for town government and the school department. That's what appears to be right now. And when we really get the detailed report, I'll be very happy to share that with the town right now and with the Board of Salt. That's good. It is very good. Yeah, it's really worked out well. Is there any, um, I know when Lou was the selectman here, um, he was interested in looking into any other places that we could start another solar farm. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're also looking at? Absolutely. Into, Absolutely. Uh, hopefully to, uh, you know, to provide power to, um, especially the water department, you know, for the water filtration plant. Uh, down at Glenwood Road and Ridge Avenue, because that is uh, that is a, a major user of electricity in the department, as well as, and I might add, the school department uses 66% of all the electricity that all town departments use. You know, those five schools use a lot of electricity during the course of the year. Yeah. That's good. That is good to know. One other item I wanted to talk about on any business was uh, if we need any progress on banning electric trucks. I asked uh, some of the other communities, like I mentioned in my last report, um, if they had any uh, any movement in, in banning those uh, LED trucks. And 
some of them have started to look at those things because now they're be able to see them, you know, possibly in some of the streets, especially in the, on the North Shore. I think. Yeah, I think they're becoming more and more common. So mm -hmm. if we get out in front of it, make right. it best. Well, I hope you get your answer, Matt. Before I actually see one of these trucks, <laughs> I've never seen one in my life, and we ask Ed every single meeting. We haven't had an answer yet. Hopefully soon, then. Moving on to the upcoming issues. I got something else, oh, Mr. Sorry, Chairman. John. Go ahead. Uh, I was asked by uh, several citizens uh, on a couple issues coming on, uh, definitely about uh, the center of town and how in the summertime it seems that the DPW, because of how they do things in the winter with plowing. They take a bunch of a comp time, and there's not really any minimal staffing to take care of the grounds, especially in the center of town. Uh, and also, besides that, and also the DPW, when seeing trash dumped on the side of the road, uh, they're not proactive on picking things <coughs> up, such as basically Elmer Street, uh, where there's been several things notified to the DPW <coughs> of couches, uh, box springs, TVs dumped near the, the bogs over there and not picked up. They see where it is and still nothing being done. So I don't know what action we can take as a board right now or kind of ask the DPW saying, okay, where's your minimal staffing during the summertime? I understand, you know, you do all these hours during the winter because of plowing and other things going on because of inclement weather, especially the stuff happening in March too. They had it, you know, going crazy. I just want to make sure I get answers back to the citizens saying, what are you guys doing during the summertime? Besides, it seems like taking off. Well, if uh, the board uh, just exercises a little patience, there's a bill right now in the legislature that is in the third reading in the House. And uh, if that passes the House, hopefully, before the break for the summer. and. Uh, and an informal session goes to the Senate, then uh, you'll have somebody to directly ask about trash pickup and cleaning because I've uh, I got my hands on the uh, year-end report for the DPW, and I'll be sitting down with the DPW director and his assistant, and we'll be going over a game plan for FY19 from a staffing standpoint to ensure that we have enough people working in the summer so that we can do those very things. Cool. Thank you, Ed. Ed, are you referring to the town manager? Pardon? Are you referring to the town manager bill? Or a different bill? I'm talking about the town manager bill. That's good to know. All right, anything else on the new business? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to upcoming issues. On July 23rd, 7 p.m., PAC TV will be in with their annual report. August 6th, we open special town meeting warrant. August 17th, we'll be closing that same warrant. August 20th at 7 p.m., then we will get the Hill Bog project update. And at September 23rd, the regular weekly schedule resumes. Ed, is there a need for executive session tonight? Yes, sir. I think we'll need to come back in a public session afterwards. We may. Chairman, I guess I uh, move that we go into executive session to uh, the Mass General Law, Section 30A, Section 21, to conduct strategy session in contract negotiations and non union personnel and wage and personnel board recreation commission request, and to conduct strategy session in contract negotiations with non union personnel police chiefs contract. And three, to discuss strategy in respect of collective bargaining, the open meeting may have a detrimental effect in litigation, a litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares superior officer's contract and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on litigating position on the public body and the chair so declares AFSCME clerical union memorandum of agreement re assistant treasurer position. Second. Motion and a second will be taken by a roll call. Yes. Yes. I vote yes as well. Yes. Yes. So it passes unanimously. We're moving on to executive session. <laughs>